Hi, this is Marco Williams from PlayFab, and today we're starting a series on authentication. We're going to cover authenticating anonymously, and then we're going to cover uh, logging in with email and password, and then later in the series, we're going to venture into logging in with Facebook and logging in with Google. Let me show you a little bit of you know how this works. So one, I'll just go ahead and click play and you'll notice that I, can, I have a play as a guest. Uh, so this is just gonna silently log me in as a guest. And so here I'm all logged in. Uh, I can go ahead and click this again and I'm going to log in with my email and password. Or I can try to uh, log in with an unknown user so this will start my registration flow. Uh, let's see. Uh, we'll just pick 99 here to log in. So it's not going to find this user. It's going to prompt me and say, hey, this user is not, not found. Do you want to create this account? And I'm going to go ahead and confirm my password. And now it's registering my user. And now I can log in with that user. And that's pretty much it. We have a remember me feature, uh, which will cover how to properly remember a user. So let's dive into the actual components that kind of make up this sample. So I have a login window and this has my login window view script. This is just a standard mono behavior with a bunch of meta references to objects in the hierarchy. So you'll see that I have my username and my password, uh, my login buttons are all hooked up here. That's pretty much the makeup. There's nothing fancy here. Uh, this is just basic UI components that are built into Unity. We've created kind of a little UI kit that kind of goes along with a sample. Looking at the code, so all the code is already prepared in the sample. You can download it and follow along if you would like. But if I pull up the code, so here is my uh, window view. And I've, like I said, I've defined all of the uh, meta reference properties that you can hook up all of your UI in the inspector. We have some panels here that we reference so that we can turn on and off the different uh, UI components. We'll cover what this does uh, in a little bit, but just an overview. When you make an authentication call to PlayFab, you can specify other data that you want returned about that user. And this gives you an easy way to configure what that is going to be in your game. And as a matter of fact, if I flip back over into our login window script and I expand down this info request parameters, you can see that um, there are all these other attributes that you can pull along with uh, authenticating. So uh, going back, we have an auth service. So this is something that uh, I created for this sample and it is a helper to do all of the work of actually authenticating behind the scenes and allow your UI to just interact with that service. And behind the scenes, this service is actually making all the calls to PlayFab and we will cover everything that that does. So I have on awake, I'm clearing player prefs uh, and there's some stuff that we are doing to save the authentication type, etc. We'll cover that as well as remembering your remember me settings. Um, and this is, again, just some standard behavior that Unity gives you from your toggle and we're just remembering those settings. In our start, we're starting off by hiding all the panels. And we wanna do this because there are occasions where you don't want to um, display any sort of UI and we'll cover that scenario. For right now, I'm hiding all the panels and I'll show you exactly how that panel actually shows up. So there are some events that I put on the service and one of them is 
on display authentication. And that is what actually tells the UI to show up. And you can choose whether to show that UI or to do something else. Um, then when a user has successfully logged in, uh, we fire an event. And if there are any errors in that process, we also fire an event. So this set of code, we're just subscribing to button clicks and button presses. Um, there are multiple ways to do this. Uh, I like to do it in code. And then here we are assigning our uh, info request pram settings from our metadata into the auth service uh, so that we can use those when we authenticate. And then here we're just calling our auth service authenticate and that is going to pick up the state of your authentication and go ahead and display that. So here we're handling the on login success and all we're doing here is just showing the next panel that we have set up and we are also showing the playfab ID of the user in the debug console. So if we actually looked here, it says logged in as, and that's where that's coming from. If there are any errors, we're handling a couple different cases. So we'll know if the user types an invalid username or password, and we can actually display that in our UI. We're checking for if the account wasn't found, and that's how I'm initiating our registration process. And then if there are any other errors that are happening, we just want to display that to the user in this particular example. But this gives you full control over how you do error handling in your game. Also, we're going to log any errors to the console so that way we can see what's going on. So this is the part that I was saying was very interesting is that I'm calling authenticate and if we actually take a look at what the authentication method does in the beginning, uh, if I scroll down here to authenticate, authenticate is looking for the different auth types. And uh, we just have a switch case statement here that is saying, hey, if auth type is none, then we want to kick off the on display authentication event. And so by default, we hit all of that UI. If we look back over into the login window view, you'll see that I'm just setting the panel to active, but we don't have to do that. We could say, I don't want my user to see any type of authentication. And then instead we're going to do something more reflective of that behavior. So if I were to take these two lines and put them up here, There you go. That was a typo. Fix that. If I take these two lines and put them here, then the user would essentially see no UI and it would just choose to authenticate the user silently. There's actually a second override for this method and I can actually just do it that way. And I think that's the preferred method anyways. So I'm going to replace this in my example and just get rid of this altogether because it's much simpler. Okay, so we could do it this way and this would display no UI and just silently log in the user. And we're gonna cover what that means in just a moment. Uh, I just want to finish kind of reviewing how our UI code is interacting with the user. So once we've decided uh, how we want to interact with our user, in my case, I'm going to be showing some sort of UI that allows the user to choose which authentication type that they want to do. Uh, so once you have that, we flip back over to our project and the user is going to pick some way to authenticate in, into my game. Um, so if they check play as a guess, all I'm doing here is making my progress bar go and update. And then I'm telling it authenticate uh, silently. 
and then if they choose the login button, so that is this login button here, then it is going to, again, update the progress bar. Um, I have it doing a couple little loops and then I'm setting the email and password for what they entered. And then I'm also calling the authenticate method again, but I'm passing in the specific auth type for that scenario. And then if it comes back with an error, you'll see the error was account not found. It's going to actually prompt the user again with the registration panel. And so if they select yes on the registration panel, it's actually, that's this on register button clicked. And we're just doing a quick check to see if the passwords match. And if they do, then we're gonna go ahead and set that email and password field again. And then we're going to change the auth type to register the PlayFab account. And this tells the authentication service exactly how to do that. Uh, if they cancel, we're just clearing the form. Uh, and you'll see I have not done any of the code yet for uh, Facebook or Google authentication because that's coming in the, the next videos.